Modeling is a basic skill in operations research, but beginners often find it difficult to formulate a mathematical model. Hence I have decided to make a series of short videos in which I step by step explain how to model. You will see that modeling is indeed an art. There is no simple recipe to follow. Beginners should therefore not be frustrated when first attempts are tough. Just don't give up too early. You will learn by your mistakes. Without further ado, let's have a look at a very first example. Suppose we want to produce furniture from small wooden parts. To illustrate the situation, I have here a bunch of Lego bricks that represent those parts. As you can see, there are different kinds of parts. We have 2 by 2s and we have 2 by 4s. The number of parts is limited. We've got 8 2 by 2s and 6 2 by 4s. From these parts we can produce tables and chairs. A table is made out of two 2x4s and two 2x2s like so. A chair requires one 2x4 and two 2x2s. As an exercise, you should pause the video now to make a list of all possible combinations of tables and chairs that you can produce out of the parts that are available to us. Pause the video now. Your list may look like this. We have the number of tables. We have the number of chairs, so it is possible to produce three tables and no chairs. Also two tables and two chairs are possible. Two tables, one chair, two tables, no chair. Okay, we have one table and three chairs, one table, two chairs, one table, one chair, one table, no chair. And also we have no tables and four chairs, no tables, three chairs, no table, two chairs, no table, one chair, or no table and no chairs. Now let's try to model our situation. We want to know how many tables and chairs we should produce. This is unclear to us and so we use symbols to represent those unknowns. Let T be the number of tables. And let's see when be the number of chairs. As part of a model, we usually specify the so-called domain of these unknowns. That is, the set of values from which we have to select a number. In our application, we can define the domains as follows. Find t is greater than or equal to zero, and c is greater than or equal to zero. This makes sense because we cannot produce a negative number of tables or chairs. 
Note that it is common practice to have real numbers in mind unless otherwise stated. This means our domain for t as well as for c is defined to be the set of non-negative real numbers. For the time being, let's not worry about integers in this application. Next, we have to write down the conditions, or the constraints as we call them, that we have to take into account. In our furniture production problem, we have to take into account that the number of parts is limited. For the 2 by 4s, this means that we must not use more than 6. Recall that we need 2 for a table and 1 for a chair. Formally, this can be written as follows. Two times t plus one times c is smaller than or equal to six. In a similar fashion, we have two times t plus two times c is less than or equal to eight for the two by twos, because we have eight of them and two are required for each piece of furniture. By the way, the order in which we write down the constraints does not matter. What we have now is a very first model that describes the situation we had given. A few technical terms should be introduced at this point. The unknowns are referred to as decision variables. And the data that was given to us is called parameters. A feasible solution is an assignment of values from the domain to the decision variables such that all constraints are fulfilled without exception. Note that the list you have compiled contains all feasible solutions for our problem, given that we confine ourselves to integer solutions only, which is something we agreed not to worry about in this video. Let's now assume that we can sell the furniture that we produce. Suppose that the price for a table is 16 euros and the price for a chair is 10 euros. This leads us to what we call an objective function. Sixteen times t plus ten times c. That's a function that assigns a value to each solution. If we want to compare two feasible solutions with each other, we can now compute their objective function values and compare them. In our application, it might make sense to claim that the more money we earn, the better it is. Consequently, we face a maximization problem. What is the number of tables and chairs that we should produce such that we earn the most money? Formally, this is written like so. In other contexts, we may face a minimization problem and we would write min instead of max then. Note that the objective function does not have any effect on what is a feasible solution and what is not. 
but the other way around only a feasible solution can be an optimum solution. An optimum solution is a feasible solution such that the objective function value is best among the feasible solutions. As an exercise, you may pause the video again and compute the objective function values for all the feasible solutions in your list. Find the best solution in our problem. Pause the video now. If you did right, you found that it is best to produce two tables and two chairs. The optimum objective function value is 52 euros. Note that if you were asked to name a feasible or even optimum solution, you have to provide nothing more than values for all the decision variables. In our case, we would say that t equals 2 and c equals 2 is an optimum solution. The corresponding objective function value, 52 in our case, is additional info. To wrap things up, let's recall what we have learned by this first example about the typical approach in operations research. First, there was a story, producing furniture in our case. In operations research, the story is called the problem. We may face a feasibility problem, any feasible solution would be fine, or we may face an optimization problem, a solution with best objective function value is desired. Next we can describe the problem in mathematical terms, parameters, decision variables and their domains, constraints, and possibly an objective function. This is called a model. On the third level, we have solution methods. You have used a solution method that is called complete enumeration. You have listed all feasible solutions and you have selected the best one then. This of course is not a very smart solution method, but it is sufficient for the purposes of this video. It is important to note that a model was independent from the method. Be warned, there are more advanced methods that make heavy use of the model formulation. But this is out of the scope of this video. For a beginner, it is very important to discriminate these three levels. When discussing things in operations research, it is essential that you are always very aware of what level your discussion is focused at. Are you discussing the problem? For example, the assumptions or simplifications you make on the problem level? Or are you discussing a model? For example, what decision variables to use or how to formulate constraints? Or is it methods you are concerned about? For example, how to find a good solution in short time? The focus of this video series is on models. Problems may be given as examples, of course. But we are almost never concerned about how to compute a solution that is methods of minor to no importance in our context. Hope you enjoyed our trip so far.